So how do we make the internet as beautiful and healthy as possible and integrate it into a beauty, a beautiful and healthy physical community? It, this is our challenge. Let's take it on with relish. If you're afraid of the truth, turn this video off right now. <laughs> so I want to make the case that being embedded within some form of socially imposed matrix is inescapable. We have to be functioning members because we're social creatures. I think we have to accept our place to an extent. Now this is the important point, to a degree we have to accept the position that is foisted upon us by the socially imposed matrix that we find ourselves embedded within. Okay. <clears throat> so, take today's matrix as an example. The mainstream society matrix. The matrix of the official social structures that we're all born into. Western moderns, anyway. I think this is an example of a matrix where an individual's independence and an individual's ability to self-determine their life, um, the degree to which an individual has agency and autonomy to determine their own life course has been reduced to a minimum. <laughs> I think we're all just sort of like cogs in a machine. And this is like, this is Paul Kings North's language the machine is what's causing all of the environmental problems that we can observe in the world today. But I would argue that were we to consider this concept of the machine through a different lens, not necessarily the environmental one, but say a philosophical or a sociological one, we would see its pernicious effects operating in these other spheres of life too. So I think that's like the underlying generator function for multiple problems in many domains of life. Okay, so this is a matrix where <laughs> an individual's independence is reduced to a minimum. So, what do we do about this? Well, we accept that being matrix bound is inescapable. There is no completely freeing yourself. Absolute freedom is an insane notion. What does that even mean? But Besides that, like ramping up one value to its max causes all other values to be shed. And like that looks like atrocities. Because if you want to be free, I want to be totally free, then you'll do anything. Because now you don't care about human life anymore. Because that's another value that you should hold. There should be a dynamic tension between all these values. And we as intelligent humans should be capable of living in that tension, that dynamism. We should create ourselves in such a way that we actually relish living in that dynamism. So what do we do? We can work our way slowly, incrementally, incrementally out of this matrix or cave. Because the matrix is just a modern manifestation of, or a reinterpretation of Plato's cave allegory. So we can think of ourselves as the boy who used to be watching the shadows on the wall I used to be watching those shadows and I used to think that the flame behind me was life and the shadows, they were real life. And I want to be in those shadows and the shadows is, are everything. But no, the shadows are not everything. The shadows are lies. <laughs> so we are that boy who turns around, sees the flame, sees the people on the wall. They're casting these shadows. But I didn't see those people before. What? What's going on? Go behind the wall, go up the cave, incrementally walk up the cave, because it's a deep cave, we're deep in it, towards the sunlight, get out into the sunlight, whoa, that was a painful journey, and now my eyes are in pain because of the sun, and I've never seen the sun before, so pain is, is unavoidable, pain is actually probably necessary, adversity, necessary to create a strong human. There's the sun, oh my god, my eyes are killing me, what? And then eventually, you adjust, your eyes calibrate or recalibrate to the light of life, and you get to see 
life for what it is. You get to see the matrix that you were embedded within and that you still, to some extent, are because there's no such thing as complete freedom. Because you're going to have to go back down and tell the, the other boys, lads, this is a joke, this is a lie. So, work incrementally towards being able to see your situation in the clear light of day. And then we can actually go about creating a community of people. Okay, this is the important point because it might sound contradictory. How do you break free of the matrix and increase the relative degree to which your life is self-determined as opposed to being determined by the official social structures, that matrix into which you were born? And it might sound contradictory to propose that, oh, the way you do this is creating a community of people, like-minded people, and having the dynamic discussions and challenging one another and understanding that this sort of, there are important concepts that we have to apply elsewhere. So King's North's The Machine in the environmental sphere works. But I wager it probably belongs in other spheres like the philosoph philosophical and sociological too. And to see its negative pernicious effects, how they manifest differently in these different spheres, we need to have a community of like-minded people actually having these discussions. And this way we can form what the Czechoslovakians called, well, Vaclav Benda, the parallel poly. Parallel because it is in mutual respect and uh, consideration of the official mainstream society structures, but it's not quite completely embedded within those structures either. It's running in parallel and it will converge at certain points and diverge, converge, diverge, but nonetheless it's parallel to it and this way I think we will be able to form uh, strongholds like sort of castles you know like in ancient Europe well not ancient Europe but old school historical Europe where the castles are formed and it's going to take a strategic plan of action to destroy those castles as opposed to it just being sort of a, a natural resistance against the matrix the official structures which as soon as the matrix sees that it just blows it out of the water so that's it I think we're going to have to form communities of people that's why i do intend to in the future create a patreon that will act as an attractor for all of these like-minded people such that we can have the philosophical and sociological environmental ecological discussions about where the frick we are in the world today that's it though community and i have this vision in my mind of creating a physical community of people where the nucleus is sort of regenerative agriculture and it's only the best, highest quality food is fed to the people who are then the most healthy people <laughs> who then have the most healthy discussions and conversations who then understand the healthiest course of action to take sort of a thing but I also have a vision of being able to integrate the online world into the physical, physical world this is sort of a, a challenge for the 21st century modern man how do we integrate this online craziness where consider the sort of the views of the preceding generations they think the internet is this weird like fad you know it's not it's here to stay so how do we make the internet as beautiful and healthy as possible and integrate it into a beauty a beautiful and healthy physical community it, this is our challenge Let's take it on with relish.